Oh, Libby, I'm sorry. It's looking like I'm going to have to meet your parents ahead of the wedding on my own today. Huh? How come? What about your mom? I don't have all the details, but basically, apparently there was a huge screw-up at the office, and she just got called in on short notice as a matter of urgent importance. She says the company's in chaos, and everyone's losing their heads due to some major IT issue. Damn, that sucks. It must be pretty serious if they're calling your mom in on short notice like this. Has this happened before? Nope. First time. Don't worry though, babe. She says she's still going to do whatever she can to make it. it. It'll probably just be a little later than planned is all. Could you tell your parents just to expect me for the time being? Also, tell them we're really, really sorry. Got it. Don't worry, Andy. It's fine. This whole thing has been a mess since the start, to be honest. The plan was for you to meet my parents on your own to begin with, but for some reason my stubborn blockhead dad insisted your mom be there for the occasion. I was super grateful when she managed to make the time despite being crazy busy with work. Your mom's pretty high up at the company, right? You know what they say, with great power comes great responsibility. Can you believe we've been engaged for three months and you still haven't met my mom and dad? It's kind of funny when you think about it. Yeah, I know, babe. It's just been one thing after the other, right? Anyway, don't worry. My mum promised she's going to do whatever she can to be there. Thanks for being so understanding about all this. Right, well, I'm going to be at the Italian restaurant we booked at 11am, just like we planned. Okay, great. Take care on the way, Andy. Well, if it isn't my least favourite poverty-stricken loser, how you doing, Mr. Single Mother Household? You have the nerve to say you want my daughter's hand in marriage only for your mother to stand us up on the day of her first meeting. Ah, but really, I can't expect you to respect your father-in-law when you don't even know what it's like to have a dad. <laughs> I'll take it this is Libby's dad, Paul. Yeah, that's right. I got your number after a sneaky look through my wife's phone. <laughs> you low-life son of a bitch. Yeah, I know. Your wife just sent me a message apologizing for what you did at the restaurant. My wife apologized to you? <laughs> she wouldn't be seen dead apologizing to the likes of such a peasant. Don't make me laugh, boy. What the hell do you think you're doing? You storm into the Italian restaurant I booked for us all like a man possessed. Then you double bitch slap me in the face with a fat lot of banknotes. I can't believe you. You're crazy. You should know, boy. That fat wad of bank notes I just taught you a lesson with was ten thousand dollars. You hear that? Ten thousand. You mean you got all that money prepared, especially to pull your crazy little stunt? No matter how much I think about it, no matter how many times I go over it in my head, I can't fathom why you would do that to someone you'd only just met, let alone your daughter's fiancé. What the hell's your problem? What exactly don't you like about me? What did I ever do to deserve that? I just told you, didn't I? Goddamn, son, you really are a moron. There is no way I can let some broke loser from a single mother household marry my precious daughter. Marry someone from your own social class, peasant. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I was raised by a single mother, but you should know that my mum has a good job and does pretty well for herself, so there's no chance of us ever being in financial trouble. Not now, not ever. That's nothing but your one-sided interpretation of events. Believe me, kid, your mom's struggling financially. All single mothers are. She probably just doesn't want to admit it. All single mother households are poor. And all poor people come from single mother households. It's just the way of the world, boy. You've probably been so poor your whole life that you lack the ability to recognize the desperation of your own situation. Allow me to rephrase that to make it easier for you to understand, given that you're such a pea brain moron. Basically, you and my daughter's values are too different for you to be a suitable husband for her. So you listen, and you listen good. I do not acknowledge this wedding, and you do not have my blessing. If we allow a poverty-stricken brokey like you into the family, you'll be begging for handouts before we know it. But you should know. My family ain't no charity, kid. Get on government handouts and leave us the hell alone. When you see a cockroach, there's only one course of action. To crush it. And crush you I did. <laughs> Fun. I see how it is. 
So you're prejudiced against single mothers. Oh, I get it. So you hate me. I get it. So that doesn't give you the right to come up and slap me in the face with a wad of banknotes on our first time meeting. I'm your daughter's fiancé for crying out loud. I introduce myself like that because I don't acknowledge you as my daughter's fiancé. Just like I told you, kid. What is it? You struggle to read English? This just proves that single mothers are a scourge on humanity and should be eradicated from the face of the earth. You illiterate oxygen thief. And do you seriously think a lowly maggot raised by a single mother like you deserves my daughter's hand in marriage? Quit making me repeat myself, boy. Anyway, your subhuman mother just proved my point. This was her chance to show me that not all single mothers are a total waste of space. But no, she just had to go and be late to our meeting, didn't she? You lower class peasants make me sick. Paul, I know Libby already told you this, but my mum got called into the office on urgent notice. She had no choice about not being able to make it on time. I can assure you she wanted to. She just messaged me. She'll be arriving at the restaurant soon. You mean she got summoned to the office by the boss? How'd she screw up this time? <laughs> you know, it would be funny if it wasn't so tragic. A single mothers are all the same. <laughs> no, you're wrong. That's not why they called her. In any case, I don't approve of you marrying my daughter. Anyway, where did you go after I brought the smack down on you, kid? You run away with your tail in between your legs like the little bitch that you are, huh? Did you? <laughs> One of the staff at the restaurant said I could use one of their private rooms to pull myself together in. Hmm, I see. So you're still inside the restaurant, huh? <laughs> this should be good. Hurry up and come and get it. Come and get what? The $10,000 wad of bank notes I just punked you with. You break up with my daughter. I'll give you the 10000 <laughs> Yeah, think of it as a payment for getting the hell out of her life. $10,000 must be a fortune for a broke loser like you, right? Sorry, Paul. If you'll excuse me, my mum just got here and I'm going to go speak to her. Huh? Sorry for keeping you waiting. I was speaking to my mum. Yeah, what's wrong, kid? Stuck between the rock and the hard place of wanting that big juicy 10k while simultaneously wanting to preserve uh, what remains of your wounded pride. <laughs> I need to ask you this just in case. But are you sure you want me to break up with Libby? Yeah, my mum. We're on our way to see you now. <laughs> I see how it is. So you decided to go with the 10k, did you, kid? Looks like Mr. Brokey didn't have any pride after all. Once I give you this 10k, you're never to try to speak to or see my daughter ever again. Do I make myself clear? I never want to see your low-income peasant face again for as long as I live. Hey, 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 Andy. Wait a sec. Please, I'm begging you, kid. No, no way. This, this cannot be happening. Uh, uh, your mom is the CEO of my company. I knew you had the same surname, but I, I thought there was no way. I thought a single mother could be so successful. Uh, Andy, you there, pal? Fine, you win. I approve the wedding. Uh, please, just give me a chance to explain myself to your mom, to the CEO. You can do that for me, right, bud? <coughs> Don't ignore me, Andy. Come on, kid, I just said I'd let you marry my daughter, didn't I? Uh, this is what you wanted all along. Uh, can't we just put the past behind us already? Come on, I thought we were pals. <laughs> Reply to me. Dad? God, Libby. Where the hell are you right now, young lady? Why would you disappear on me when your own wedding's on the line? I didn't disappear. I've been with Andy the whole time. Huh? Also, Andy's mom is here with us. Uh, oh, really? She is? 
Libby, I'm serious here. This ain't no joke. Uh, you need to ask Andy to reply to my messages. Also, you need to tell him to bring his mom back here pronto. Uh, there is something I really gotta talk to her about. This is urgent business, I tell you. Urgent. Dad, why are you talking down to me? Why do you think you have any right to give me orders? What? Do you have any idea how weak your position is right now? Or maybe you do, and you're just burying your head in the sand and trying to deny reality. Is that it? Um, Libby, what's gotten into you? Want to know why I never told you about Andy's mom all this time? Because I knew how much pleasure you take in looking down on those you perceive to be lower down the social hierarchy than you. And I thought it'd be less trouble for everyone if I kept it quiet. Less trouble? I knew that if I told you Andy's mom is the CEO of your company, you'd have been sucking up and brown-nosing her constantly for good boy points at the office, wouldn't you? Well, she, she is my boss. Yep, that's why I intentionally didn't tell you. Uh. But I had no idea you double bitch slap my fiancé with a wad of banknotes. Ugh, I've had it with you. No, oh, Libby, don't say that, please. The worst thing about this whole thing is that that $10,000 isn't even yours. That's the money from Mom's grandpa's inheritance, isn't it? Uh. You know, you and Mom both know the pins to each other's bank accounts in case of emergencies. But that doesn't give you the right to help yourself to her savings behind her back. But Libby, me and your mother are married. Married or not, wrong is wrong. Besides, who the hell do you think you are? You slap my fiancé across the face with a wad of banknotes before trying to pay him off to get out of my life with money that didn't even belong to you in the first place? Have you no shame? Um, well... Where is your pride now, Dad? I... I... Uh, are you a moron? Livy, that, that's no way to speak to your father. Take it back. Oh, don't worry, that's fine, because you're not my dad anymore. I won't be taking anything back, but want to know what I will be doing? Cutting you out of my life forever. I figured I should at least say my piece before we said our final goodbyes. Oh, what? That's not all. You'll be receiving a bill for compensation from Andy's lawyer, as well as the bill for his medical bills when he gets done at the hospital. Oh, and let's not forget the wages you'll be covering for the time he has to take off of work. Wait, 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 what compensation? Medical bills? Ow, I barely touched him. You barely touched him? You slapped him with so much force that he fell back and sprained his finger and wrist while trying to prevent himself from falling over. What? He's currently being treated at the hospital. And he works with his hands in a job that requires delicate and precise movement of his fingers. Which means that now, thanks to you, he has no choice but to take several weeks off to rest up. Oh, wait, 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 wait a sec. If that's true, how the hell was he messaging me just now? Surely if he sprained his finger, he shouldn't be able to message me, huh? <laughs> gotcha. Will you ever realize what a moron you are? It was me who sent those messages. What? Eh, I guess it's not that unreasonable that you wouldn't notice. They were entirely in his own words, after all. He told me what he wanted to say, and I typed it. What the heck? You should know that he's as shocked and appalled by what a vile, disgusting excuse of a human being you are as I am. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not like that. You, you got this all wrong. I'll be dropping Andy off at his house before heading back to my apartment. Libby. Oh, and you better make sure you give Mom back her $10,000 as soon as possible. I mean it. Uh, excuse me, Andy. Sir, would you mind, uh, would you please accompany for a meeting with your mother, the CEO? I'm gonna get demoted if you don't help me here. Uh, my wife already divorced me. I already said I'd allow the wedding. You can marry my daughter now. That's what she wanted, right? Please, I'm begging you, Andy. Andy, kid, please. I swear, my life is over if you don't help me out here. I'll do anything, anything you want. Just say the word and it's done. Please, please. Libby, 
Oh, hey, Andy. It won't be long now before your recovery is complete, right? Yep, I've been able to type messages on my own for the last week, and before long I'll be totally back to normal. Oh, I'm so relieved to hear that. Oh yeah, I heard that your mum and dad are going through divorce court. They already living separately. Yep, you betcha. The house belongs to my mom, so dad had no choice but to pack his things and leave. Would you mind filling me in on the details? Well, you know the settlement money you and my dad agreed on for you to drop the charges you filed against him? Apparently, he hadn't learned his lesson the first time around because he tried withdrawing money from my mom's bank account again behind her back in a desperate attempt to come up with the money. Wow. Are you kidding? He did it again? But this time, my mom's patience reached its limits. It turns out my mom had been putting up with a ton of his bullcrap for years. And this was the straw that finally broke the camel's back. She flipped out on him and let out all those years' worth of pent up frustrations of anger in a few minutes. So, yeah, then he left the house, and that was it. Wow, I see. But by the way, you know when my mum got called out to the company on the day we were both supposed to be meeting your parents? Well, it's about that trouble I mentioned at the company. You're never going to believe the reason she actually got called out. Oh, if you mean the cause of the problems at your mom and dad's company, I heard about it. Apparently my dad made a series of blunders that caused the entire company's IT systems to go down? He got demoted from department manager to regular old run-of-the-mill employee. I, oh, you knew? Yep, that's exactly how it went. I don't work there myself, so I'm not familiar with all the details, but I hear that's the gist of it. Can you believe he screwed up so hard he paralyzed the entire company while he was busy throwing his weight around with you and your mom like he was your lord and master? God, he's such an arrogant jerk. I am so fed up with him, it's hard to even get mad anymore. It's more like a disappointed exasperation. I'm so sorry for everything he put you and your mom through. You didn't deserve any of that. Why would you apologize? You didn't do anything wrong, Bab. My mom knows it's not your fault too, so don't sweat it. Thank you. Oh, by the way, you know those pamphlets from the wedding venue we discussed before? Well, guess what? They finally arrived. You want to take a look? Hell yeah, you bet I do. All right, I'll bring him along for tomorrow's date then. Well, your Sunday best, sweet cheeks. <laughs> but for now, I've got to take a shower. Sunday best? Sure thing, I can do that. I'm so looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow, sweetie. No kidding, look at the time. Uh, I think I better jump in the tub myself. All right, well, good night, babe. Catch you tomorrow, okay? Yep, nighty night, pumpkin pie. <laughs> See you tomorrow. After a tempestuous period of hostility and tedious legal procedures, Libby's mum and dad's divorce finally went through, a few months after the events of today's saga. As for the settlement money, we agreed on for me to drop the charges for the assault. He paid me it all in one lump sum, out of what little he had left of his savings. I was actually surprised. I figured he'd try and worm his way out of it somehow, but I've got to give credit where credit's due. We may have put the whole thing behind us, but that doesn't mean we'll be inviting him to our wedding. When we informed him as such, through my lawyer, apparently his face turned as pale as a sheet, and his expression turned to one of hopeless despondence before he finally burst into tears. Astonishingly, in spite of everything, it still seemed like he had no idea as to why his life was in such a bad way. A few weeks later, he was reported for breaching his company's sexual harassment policy, fired on the spot, and on top of having used the last of his savings on my settlement money and compensation, suddenly found himself flat out broke. Last I heard, he currently works part-time flipping burgers while spending his days being told off by his high school student boss, while constantly on the verge of tears. I guess it's true what they say. What goes around comes around. Remember to be nice, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.